hello beautiful people welcome back to another video so today i created this video as a way of educating you guys about the razor's negative blood because some of you guys asked me about it like how do you go about it when you're pregnant and why is it that you need that rogam injection and i felt it's useful to talk about it because it's something that most people really don't know about they only realize about it after they maybe miscarried several times like just to give you uh, a few stories so yeah if you know about me you know like i'm a nurse so i've worked in the maternity in maternity for uh, a couple of months so when i was working there i was able to encounter a couple of women who came in having miscarriages each and every other time there's this one lady like she had almost five miscarriages and like only one child survived the first born then from there onwards she no other child has ever survived she has just been having miscarriages 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 and even if the baby is able to survive the baby will be born with heart problems jaundice and all those kinds of things not until she was able to go to a like a highly equipped hospital whereby they were able to tell her that you are razors negative so it's something that's happening like there are a couple of people who really don't know yet about their blood group and why it's important for you to know your rhesus factor so that's why you find that most of these people especially if the people who don't give birth in the hospital maybe they give birth through this assisted like the people who assist in the villages and that's it and every other time they always say keep on saying oh i'm cursed they move from one place to another saying i'm cursed like this the people in this village are just like trying to make me not not have children you end up thinking you are cursed yet it is not a curse it is your razor's factor that you haven't realized about yeah so just getting into it i'm going to try to make this as simple as possible for you to understand yeah so everyone has a blood group you're either a a b b or o but then apart from having that blood group you have razors like a razors factor you can either have it or don't have it like if you have the razors factor you are positive and if you don't have the razors factor you are negative so if you are positive like, like o positive a b positive a positive but then if you are negative like me i'm o negative so that means I don't have the rhesus factor in my red blood cells, if you're getting it. So from there, like, you might wonder, like, how does someone get to be O negative? And how is it, th like, how is it that I get to be O negative and someone else gets to be O positive or AB positive? So the thing is, it is, like, can I say kind of genetic? Because you can, or you can, like, get this blood group, like, this rhesus thing, if it is kind of in your family. Like, for me... I tried to look into it with my family. So what happened is that I think because my grandparents, like the other side, like my grandfather is not there. So I just tried to figure this out. So I think maybe like my grandfather was a carrier. You can be a carrier. A carrier is someone who has a certain component in their body, but it is not showing. Like they have the razors negative genetic in their blood but then when you like when you test their blood they are razors positive so they are just carriers so if one of them like i just figured out that maybe one of them was a carrier then my aunt is razors negative so my aunt is razors negative and then my dad was a carrier so if he's a carrier he is the one who will give birth to a child who is razors negative. So I'm razors negative. But then one of his children will also be a carrier. So let's say someone like maybe my brother is a carrier. So because he's a carrier, he'll be the one to give birth to a razors negative child. But then also a carrier. Like, are you seeing the way the cycle goes there? Yeah, that is just kind of how I research and figure it out. So yeah. When you have razors negative, so how does this end up affecting your pregnancy? Now let's come to the part where it affects your pregnancy. So the thing is, someone who was O positive, I like using O, O positive and O negative. Like the fact that you have razors factor and this other person does not have, your blood cannot mix. Like your blood cannot mix. So what happens is that when you are pregnant and you have razors negative and you are pregnant, and let's say the person you got... Uh, you engage it with like let's say your husband or something uh has O positive or has a like the razor's factor so that means most likely the child you are going to have most likely the child might take the razor's uh, the blood group from the dad and maybe the child now is 
positive resus factor so you get me positive so you're having a positive baby and yet you yourself you are resus negative so one way in which you cannot bring this problem is to marry someone who has resus negative but you just can't go and start asking for someone who has a resus negative or because you are resus negative like even the percentage in the entire world i think it's i don't know 11 percent or 15 percent of people have the resus negative so that means it's so rare to find someone especially men who have resus negative so most likely the person you're going to get married to if you're resus negative most likely they're going to be resus positive so what happens is that when, I, when you're pregnant your baby is resus positive your blood the blood your blood and that of your baby might mix most of the time is during delivery because you have to deliver the placenta and so but then other ways is maybe like let's say you have placenta abruption or there's a certain invasive procedure that has been done that has made your blood to mix that will make your body to create antibodies antibodies because uh, your, your body will consider this as invaders as something that has invaded your body because it does not accept so when your body like does not accept, accept something it forms antibodies so your body is going to form antibodies against those like when your blood and your baby has mixed if you're getting what i'm saying so if it is an um, emergency like placenta abruption or an invasive procedure you have to get that rogam injection immediately but then the other times there are like the, during the other times when maybe there is no problem you can just have it during 28 weeks and within 20, 72 hours that is after delivery okay so what happens is you like, like the baby has been delivered blood has mixed mother has formed antibodies and the antibodies stay in the body for like even a year like more than a year like the longest time the antibodies will just stay in your body so whenever you're pregnant let's say you're pregnant males let's say after two years with your second baby remember the placenta allows you to pass antibodies to the body to the baby that is so when you're pregnant with your second baby remember those antibodies that were created when you're pregnant with your first baby that like during the blood mixing during delivery those antibodies were created these antibodies will pass and go to the baby and then they lead to destruction of red blood cells in the baby's body and this is what will make the baby be like have anemia jaundice born be, be born with heart failure liver failure so such kind of things and that is why like you find a really big percentage of these babies even don't usually survive so what do we do to prevent this the first thing make sure you know your blood group and you know your razors like if you are maybe in a facility that is not able to like you're not able to know your blood group in maybe it's somewhere in interior, interior like if you really can make sure especially if you had let's say you had a miscarriage in a second pregnancy you had a miscarriage in your third pregnancy then i think you should make sure you consider checking your blood group just go to a facility that has a laboratory then you can check your blood group and also you can do uh, you can confirm this there's something called du test so when i talked about that du test in that video that's when people ask me like so like why should i do a du test is it really important to do a du test for me i did a du test because um the place where i went to check my blood group they were like you are o positive but then for me like ever since i knew my blood group when i was in high school because we were donating blood and they had to bring back the card for donation and the card came back like all negative that's when i knew my blood group because i was also being taken for like like people from the hospitals that were around used to come pick us up take us to the hospital make us donate blood frequently only for them to give us uh sodas and uh, mandazis you just know like the way when you're in high school the fact that you'll be given soda and mandazi you really don't you just keep on donating donating so that's when i knew my blood group so i was like yeah like my blood is all negative and you're saying it's opposite so the only thing i had to do is to do a due test so that's why i'm saying if you're really not sure about it where it's been done you can go to another higher facility and do this du test yeah if you know you already like know your blood group so the first thing is to confirm your blood now you already know your blood you know your own negative you should get that injection most of people i'm sure you get it 28 weeks 34 weeks and after delivery but getting at 28 weeks and after delivery is just okay so you should get that injection during that time 
I think it is usually the Rugam injection. I think it's usually five thousand Kenyan shillings if you want to buy it. That is like fifty dollars. But I really don't know about all the other places and maybe from hospital to hospital. Maybe some cards might cover you or something. But generally, most of the people whom I saw like buy, they used to buy it at five thousand Kenyan shillings. So you buy it during twenty-eight weeks, and then you buy it again after delivery. And then that is the second thing. And then after that, you may like you should know that you're not only going to get this injection once, because what happens is you'll get sensitized each and every other time. Because if you deliver your second baby and your blood mixes again, you are sensitized again. You are able to like you will be able to produce these antibodies again. So that means during the time you are like probably the third pregnancy this thing will happen again that means you need to get the injection after like during every other pregnancy but it's also better like if you like don't uh you minimize the, like, I, I, I don't want to tell you that oh i have five kids or have three kids but you minimize at least reduce the number like <laughs> you're getting me yeah so i really hope i helped someone out with that video and yeah thank you for watching this video and see you on my next one Bye bye